you want to tell us a bit, Colin, before we start about the Technology Exploration Lab while we're sort of waiting for people to join yeah, in? Yeah, might as well. Um, so I'll obviously there'll be a little bit of an introduction from myself, so I may well have repeated myself because I can't remember exactly what I recorded. <laughs> um, but so I'm I'm Colin Dart, um, the technology manager for Set Squared Exeter. Um, first thing is I apologise. I have a new laptop with a terrible camera that seems to make me very dark. Um, but other than that, um, so the Technology Exploration Lab was set up by Set Squared Exeter um, as a kind of a, a reaction to there not really being many physical resources that are available for people to trial. Um, and test and have a play with um, kind of cutting edge technology without being tied to um, an institution or or actually the barrier of already knowing a little bit about how to use them. Um, so places like Fab Labs are great um, and that tends to be where we got our model from, um, this idea of having people on hand to help. But rather than those kind of traditional fabrication things, although there's a couple, it's more about um, high tech um, you know, things that are just on the market. So we've got, we do have a large format SLA printer, but we've also got an electronics area for production and testing of electronics. We've got some high-end computing in one of the um, Z series workstations from HP. Um, we recently upgraded the RAM to over a, uh, over 100 gigs. So that's nicely wearing along for people's projects. Um, some AR and VR kit um general little bits and pieces for people to play with you know the kind of raspberry pi arduino stuff that you might see in in some of the hack boxes around um but more importantly a whole bunch of partnerships with things like software vendors and platform vendors so that all of that kind of software all the way from 3d modeling and things like solidworks through to data visualization with tableau um you know deployment through things like aws um uh, and so all the kind of dependencies around that um, and loads and loads of stuff around that, not only with our support, but with their support as well. So that people um, either through workshops that we run, events that we run or by engaging with us, um, we can essentially support people to test whether or not that particular technology is a viable delivery mechanism for what they're thinking about. Um, and that that is touched upon in the talk. Um, you know, it's it's the arena that I work in, which is this kind of viability um, arena. Um, it's the playing with technology as your day job I, arena. I, Colin's just off having fun all the time. I, I Pop I in am. and he's he's three D printed something else crazy and uh, yeah. So I I enjoy the the um, resin printer. I always coveted one of those and. You've got a nice one of those, so it's great. I mean, it is great fun, and I'm I'm not going to lie. Um, several personal project projects have been done, um, and and why not? You know, and playing around with the VR headsets and things. Collins, Collins just got got the job. Everyone's jealous of is what Collins yeah. got. Yeah. Um, so it is almost three thirty, and I can see we've got uh, quite a few people come in and trying. Um, so I'm going to, uh, I'm here mostly as tech support, if you need anything, shout, but I will tee up the talk and play it in a, in a second. Um, Colin will be here then at the end for questions. If you have any questions, pop them in the chat. Um, if they're really quick answers, then Colin might just chat back to you straight away, or we'll save them for Q&A discussion at the end. Um, you're welcome Colin, to, to keep the Q&A going as long as you like. So we have uh, our last session of the day, last speaker of the day over at four o'clock on the main stage. So um, if you if people want to see that, then just bear that in mind. But otherwise, you're free to, to chat away in this room as much as you like. Um, so, Colin, do you have any other things you want to say before I hit play, or do you want me to dive um, straight in? I think uh, uh, just a very, very quick introduction. Today. Um, I mean, I haven't caught all of the videos today, um, and it's great that they're all recorded so that I can I can watch back. Um, and I hope that everyone else gets the opportunity to watch everything they need to watch as well. Um, this is this is very much um, it's almost a theory based one um, so apologies if it gets a bit academic but that's the that is the area that I sit in 
Um, but just to say, I'm going to chuck a few links in the chat. I think I mentioned it in a talk, but again, I can't remember because it was recorded a while ago. Um, just so that there is a, a written word version of the talk um, to read in your own time, just in case you want to. But also contact details and the, and the presentation, just in case you can't see. But otherwise, yeah, please do tee up, Catherine. Sorry about that. Had when a it, whole, whenever had a whole day, but still on mute. I I don't. I thought I'd unmute it, but the the fun thing is that the message that says "Are you maybe talking?" You might be on mute. <laughs> pops up over the top of the unmute button, so you have to close that before you can unmute. But anyway, thank you, Colin. Is what I was saying. Um, great session. A lot of stuff that I've I've sort of spoken to a lot of startups about in the past myself. I, I love the double diamond, always drawing that double oh, diamond. Everyone, everyone loves a double diamond. <laughs> um, so it is question time. Make sure you pop your questions in the chat, everybody. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick off. I want to know, Colin, what are some of your favorite examples of, of fun projects that you've seen, uh, either from local companies or, or others? I think... Um, <laughs> And, and, and honestly, I've not just been blessed with being able to to sit around people delivering wonderful things, but also the, the startups, um, you know, doing things. And I think um, the most interesting ones are the ones where you're not quite expecting them, because um, because some of them are, you know, I'm not going to say they're obvious; they're innovations. But you can see where they've got that that idea from. Um, uh, I once asked her to speak at an event, actually, because I found it so interesting. But um, uh, Zoita, Zoita Mandela, um, she's a clinical dentist. Um, she engaged with the University of Exeter and the local tech company to and completely out of her comfort zone. Um, and she's still doing this to create a VR solution to anxiety in dental patients. So it did two things. Um, one is that what she was looking at was essentially, uh, I suppose, akin to say, say hypnotherapy. Um, you know, put yourself in your safe space um, whilst you're having your treatment undergone. Um, but through exploring VR, she really realised that actually the the greatest thing that could happen here is if she could um, make her um, clinical setting in an environment for people to get used to it beforehand. So you could sit in her dentist chair and see her and undergo a kind of a fake um, kind of operation or, or procedure so that you could be comfortable with what you're going to see on the day. Um, and actually, that's now undergone some research as a result and has got some really good positive um, kind of feedback and results. So it kind of it started to, to really push this idea that not only has she sought the kind of expertise and done this wonderful thing that's a little bit off off the bat but has also changed that idea halfway because of that feedback um and there's loads of those kind of examples really uh that's fascinating i i sort of thought her solution was putting a vr headset in people on people when she they were in the chair so they could look at soothing clouds or something i had it was it is that's how it started that is how <laughs> okay it started. okay so I'm being summoned away to uh, to do a next sorry. sort of interview chat on the, the main stage. It'll be starting at, at four. But um, if anyone has any more questions for Colin or Colin, if you have any more interesting examples you want to share, then feel free to keep the chat going, stay in the room. Otherwise, uh, maybe see some of you over on the main stage in a short while. But thank you again, Colin, uh, for joining us. Thanks a lot, Catherine. Um, yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right, Richard. Um, you know, it's the getting out of the comfort zone. Um, and, it, and it is always a bit hard. And, you know, I've I've had to do this myself um, many times, and especially when kind of transitioning careers a little bit as well. Um, you know, I used to be um, a developer. Um, and I think there have been times when, and he's, he's on the call, but I don't know if he's still on the call, actually, but Calvin, um, when I was chatting to the guys at Del Boomi around what they do. Um, and I alluded to the fact that I was making something very, um, that, that I could make on their code base, but I was making it in PHP and was almost laughed out of the room. Um, because, you know, it just showed a little bit of my age, but also that I have my comfort zone. But it's really important at that point to acknowledge that it, it doesn't necessarily mean you're wrong being in that comfort zone. You know, if the right answer is 
is PHP for whatever it is you're doing, then great. Um, but being able to talk to people and say, is this the right way of doing it? So, you know, being able to, you know, find those peers and those those people, you know, are open and honest and saying, do you know what? I'm thinking about this idea. I, I already know how to do a MySQL PHP thing. Do you think that's the right idea or should I be looking at building this in something else? Um, and even just really simple things. It might not be the whole project, but it might just be that that little element of it that you need that feedback to get you out of that comfort zone because then you can go off and do something else. And interestingly enough, I'm doing that today because I've not had much experience of using IBM's Watson um, through their kind of cloud systems. Um, but I know that something that I'm delivering to students next week is something that actually I need to be showing them on what they will probably use it with. Um, so I've got to get a little bit out of my comfort zone to do a bit of prep. So yeah, it, it is mandatory, um, or at least it's mandatory to always always be looking at um, whether or not you should. Um, yeah, Barnaby, um, definitely. Um, lockdowns challenges are are vast for most people, um, and I think that's really really obvious. But I think I work in the arena of trust. Um, you know, the team that I work in. Um, I know that they have a, a huge amount of expertise and experience. Um, we're, we are all ex-entrepreneurs. Um, we are all ex, I wouldn't say specialists, but we've all had our own ideas and done something. Um, and I think when you're in person and you're speaking to people who are just starting that journey um, or maybe restarting that journey if they're doing it again, the first thing you have to do is almost prove to them that you're there to help them and that you are you are a good basis for that. Um, and that's incredibly difficult to do on a phone or on a screen. Um, it takes a while to kind of break down, break down those barriers. So that, um, you know, alluding to the previous question, so that when we become the peers, when we become the people saying, I'm not sure you're doing the right thing, maybe have you thought about why you're doing that, that they trust it and that they'll heed that advice. Um, because if they don't trust you, um, if they don't, not necessarily respect, but if they don't see that your critical opinion has weight, um, then it then it will fall on deaf ears. So yeah, it absolutely becomes a really, really big challenge to, to be able to do that electronically. Um, now we have, I'm not plugging set squared, but obviously I am. Um, we have during lockdown, um, I was fortunate enough to be the head of a project to create our new accelerator um, so that it is raring to go and ready for as soon as people are comfortable with coming back. Um, and we've really made a space that does everything that we've been speaking about because that's that's why we, we work in this field. So it's a space where people can have that kind of cross-pollination. Um, they can talk to, you know, if there's a cohort of founders and they all work in different industries with different technologies, they're not people who would usually speak to each other, um, let alone share ideas and maybe collaborate, other than they'll be sitting in the same room when we deliver them a workshop and hopefully talk afterwards over tea and, and all of those things that, that people do in those kind of accelerator spaces. So, um, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> it's yet to be, um, it's yet to be tested um, because obviously one, no one's really moving around yet. There's a little bit of it, but not too much. Um, uh, and two, it's really, really difficult to know how comfortable people are going to be when they come back. Um, you know, it's difficult to know as well how many people are going to be open to getting out of their comfort zone, because I think we've all had to do it on a personal level, at least um, for the last year and how much more appetite we have for that. Um, but we do still still see, and hence why talking at places like this and really pushing the community we still see lots of incredibly good tech talent making wonderful new things in the area. Um, so we know that there's still that that vibrant scene. So um, I think other than that, um, just thank you. It's been great to talk, um, recorded, be recorded. Um, and there's been some other great chats and, and talks as well. And if anyone gets a chance to catch up on the talks that they haven't seen, um, please do. They're all recorded and they're all on YouTube as well. Um, but otherwise, I'm probably going to go and see 
what the other talks are doing and and maybe catch up with you guys and um, some networking later or after party, whatever you want to call it. So thanks, guys. <laughs>